In these perilous times, see from current events how biblical prophecy is coming to pass in front of our eyes. You're watching In the Last Days, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. With Martin and Natalie Blackham, thank you to our friends and partners who make this program possible. Now, here's Martin and Natalie. Shalom, dear friends. It's wonderful to be again with you. We had Eliezer Ben Yehuda as a guest, and again, we have so many things to share, and he has so many things to share, that we are very happy again to be with you today. And uh, Eliezer, now, what are you doing? What is your the threshold of, of your life right now? Well, I have been involved in explaining the miracle of the rebirth of the Jewish people as a nation in their land, which of course is the heritage, the spiritual heritage of my grandfather, the work of my grandfather, mm -hmm. which was to bring it back, to bring the Jewish people back to the land and to give them a language that will serve them as a means of communications. But more than just that, it also is a cement Mm -hmm. that brings people together. It's kind of the, um, uh, the way to avoid the syndrome of the Tower of Babel. Mm -hmm. You know, the people all spoke one language yes. and they started to build a tower. They started to build a city. They started to build a world and a life. And what happened was that their languages got mixed up. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, uh, it happened because of their avarice, because they wanted mm -hmm. to own, each one of them wanted to own that tower, you see. Mm -hmm. And so they started to speak with a double tongue. And before you knew it, they were speaking in different languages. And when that happened, they were divided and separated and the tower fell and the city fell and they found themselves spread all over the world mm -hmm. because they lost the ability to communicate with one another. The text comes from the Hebrew Scriptures. Mm -hmm. Most people don't understand the text and most people when they read that they ask, what is this? Is it really, does it really say that they wanted to build a tower to heaven because they wanted to be God? It's impossible. Nobody can be God, you see. Well, in the Hebrew, if one reads it in the Hebrew, one realizes it gives us an explanation why people are different. Because people wanted to be the gods of other people. They wanted to be in charge of them. They wanted to manipulate them. You see, and when you try to do that, the way that you do it is by speaking with the double tongue. When men try to take advantage of women, so they come to them and they speak softly and they say, oh, I love you and you're so beautiful and so wonderful and you do and this and that and the other thing and why don't you come with me and why don't we have some good times together, you see? And then after they have their way, what do they say? Get lost, who needs you? You're just a dumb blonde, or you're just this, or you're just that, you know. They've taken advantage of you. They've spoken in a different language, mm -hmm. you see. So this is an example of which the scriptures speak. Mm -hmm. And God, it says in the Hebrew scriptures, that God came to realize that the, that the nature of man is a little bit ugly from its origin, in its origin. And I don't mean just men, it's men and women. Mankind. Mankind, exactly. No, but sometimes people say to me, you know, the, uh, the Hebrew scriptures are very chauvinistic, you know, because they always talk about men and they don't talk, even they talk about God as a male. You know, it's not true, by the way. Not in Hebrew Very interesting. Again. In Hebrew, yeah, the male form is also the unknown gender form. Mm -hmm. You see, in Hebrew, there's only male and female. There is no neutral. third neutral mm -hmm. gender, you see. So if you knock on the door, in Hebrew you say, Mize, who is this man? Mm -hmm. 
You see, you don't say Mizot, who is this lady, unless you happen to know that there's no possibility of a man being behind that door. You see, so Ze and the male is always the unknown gender. And God has no gender, so he's in a way the unknown gender. But then I hear people today speaking about God and they say, she is wonderful and she is this and she is that. And I say, you know, I really get disturbed by that because now I think that the feminist movement doesn't want equality, it wants superiority. You know, like you were superior for the last 4,000, 5,000 years, give us a chance for 5,000 years. Thank you. I don't want superiority. I don't want inferiority. I want everybody to be equal. Mm -hmm. And I'm a very happily married man who's been married for more than 40 years. And I have a wonderful relation with my wife because I respect her and she respects me. And we know that each one of us has things that we do better mm -hmm. and that we can do. And it's not a question of male or female, you see. But there are things that we do, and we s treat one another with respect mm -hmm. and with consideration, and again, the L word, with love. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. And as long as you have that, this is, this very, is, yes. this is what makes mm -hmm. life worthwhile. Mm -hmm. But again, you see in the Hebrew language, Yes. You can see a lot about Ish and Isha. Absolutely. Which is like, again, something that needs to be given back. Precisely, precisely. I think that, that the Hebrew scriptures mm -hmm. have so much to teach. And really, we have come now, after, you know, halfway through the program now, mm -hmm. to where I can answer you and tell you what I do. Mm -hmm. I spend most of my time abroad. I travel in Europe and I travel in the United States, more in the United States than in Europe. But what I do is I travel and I lecture. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a book that I wrote and I sometimes go and travel and speak about the book. But I very often about teach this, this, one? The, uh, this one, the fulfillment okay. of prophecy, mm -hmm. you see. But I also go and I teach and I lecture. Mm -hmm. I do seminars, mm -hmm. sometimes two-day seminar, three-day seminar. And sometimes I teach at a university. I teach a course mm -hmm. or two courses, which I call learning the Hebrew scriptures from the Hebrew. Because if you are learning what Christianity calls the Old Testament mm -hmm. from the Greek very often, you know, they use the Septuagint, that is, you know, you're, you're getting a translation of a translation in America, they love the King James Version of the Scriptures. You see, with the D and the Dao and the Dine and, the, and all those fancy ancient British, uh, British uh, uh, expressions, you see. And so they say, to me, the King James Version is the original Old Testament. They say, eh, excuse me, have you heard about Hebrew? No, I mean, we are really seeing that we need to go <laughs> right, back to, right. to that. Anyhow, so what I do is I teach, mm -hmm. and I go back to basics. Mm -hmm. And I say to people, start with God's creation. How did God create? Why do we have this book yeah. that speaks about creation and speaks about the beginning of the generations and it's called the book of Genesis, or in Hebrew, Bereshit. Bereshit. Mm -hmm. Why is it called that? Why not use a word that will have an A in it? It would be so elegant. It would be such good form, you know? I grew up as a British mm -hmm. person because we were a British mandate. Mm -hmm. And so I was waving the Union Jack, you see? I was under the king. George the Sixth, you see, mm -hmm. and we thought that it was very swift to be British. And I say, you know, wouldn't it be just jolly to have this kind of a book that starts with a capital A, you see, 
And in Hebrew, you know, the capital A is a big Aleph. Mm -hmm. Can we start the Hebrew scriptures with a big Aleph? Sure we can. Well, she's like, God. It's the book of God. God, you know, when we say, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, this is really a kind of a twisted sentence. And it would be much better mm -hmm. pronounced if we said, God created heaven and earth in the beginning. Elohim. We don't do it. Why don't we do it? Because it's not the book of Elohim. This book of knowledge mm -hmm. God gave to mankind. And God wanted us to understand that what we have, this thing that we call life, it's not a possession. It's a manual of life. It is a manual of it is a travelogue, mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, it's a travelogue. Mm -hmm. How do you travel from day one to your last day? How do you prepare for end times? Maybe it is God's end times. Maybe it's just your end times. But God has created us in a certain fashion to be finite, mm -hmm. to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And we deny that end. And very often, because we deny that end, we also deny our Creator. And we try to fight because we are afraid of that end. And yet that end is inevitable. And that end was given to us by God from the beginning as a gift, a time to rest a time to be at peace because the travel that we go through, the road that we travel is full of pitfalls. Mm -hmm. And we need to know how to endure. And the book tells us how to endure. Very true. You endure by emulating the qualities of God. You endure by learning grace. Mm -hmm. You endure by learning to accept, to hope for the best and to accept even the worst mm -hmm. and to accept it with respect and to accept it with love from this God. So many people say God is cruel. God is not cruel. It is impossible for God to be cruel. God is not without mercy. It is impossible for God to be without mercy. It is just how we don't understand God that makes us think in those terms. Very and, true. and allowing God to enter into our lives it's very, very true. is soothing. Mm -hmm. You see? Yes. I, I know that like since 2000, no, 97, mm -hmm. we started like to have an awakening about the Hebrew roots of our faith. Sure. And I say my faith is so much stronger now. Of course. By knowing him. Mm -hmm. And I've seen him even more as a kind God, as a loving, loving, yeah, loving kindness is in mm -hmm. him and mercy and compassion Absolutely. and patience. And all of that, more I learn with the Hebrew mindset, more I can see who is God, which I know more and more how to behave. Because when you know him, it's like something happened to you that you learn that you have to be like him. Absolutely. And it's like he's doing something in you, make you being like that. Yes, so. yes. And accepting him. That's see, it. That's accepting it. Yes. God. Mm gives you more of a personality. You know, some people, you know, ascetics, you know, they believe that if you deny, if you deny everything, then you, you're set free. Well, you know, that's not what God wants. God's, God wants you to celebrate what he has given to you. You see? And you have talents, and you have, you know, an inner beauty, which 
sometimes shows itself in an outer beauty, or sometimes it shows itself, strangely enough, because you don't have that outside beauty. For example, in terms of people that I think of mm -hmm. as beautiful people, mm -hmm. one of the most beautiful people that I know of was the wife of the late President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. Eleanor Roosevelt. You ask somebody who looks at, his pic at her picture mm -hmm. and they'll tell you she was an ugly woman. You see, she was not a great beauty like Elizabeth Taylor or um, uh, what's her name, Ingrid Bergman. You know, those are classical beauties, you see. But that lady, Eleanor Roosevelt, had her character shining out of her face. And it made her beautiful more strongly than all the Greek beauties, you know, when we think of, you know, the, the art, the Greek art, you know, of creating a beautiful picture of a woman. That is the Greek See? mentality. Yes, yeah. exactly. Again, yeah. Exactly. And, you know, that was the great battle between Judaism and between Hellenism. I think it's very interesting that in English, the Greek culture is called Hellenism. Mm -hmm. And I say, they went to Hellenism. <laughs> so this is, yes. you know, it's Greek. Greek. It's Greek to me. I don't want to talk about Bible because it's Greek to me. Mm -hmm. Also because Bible actually is the Greek word for book. Yes. So which book are we talking about? You know, in America, they have Bibles for everything. They have a gardener's Bible. What is a gardener's Bible? It's a book that tells you everything about how to work in a garden and how to raise uh, roses and, and, and thistles and whatever else you want to raise in your garden. They also have a shootist Bible. I beg your pardon? A shootist Bible? Yes, it's a book with pictures of all the hunting guns and all the guns that were used by different militaries throughout history. That's a Bible? Certainly, I don't want my, Bible. the teachings, the teachings that I received from my God, I don't want that to be in a book that has the same name as a book about all those guns. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, I'm not a pacifist. I believe in self-defense, mm -hmm. and I served in the army in the, of the state of Israel, mm -hmm. you see? But I'm a man of peace. But, and and Abraham was a man of peace, exactly. but he had to go for war. Ex he and had to go to defend yes. his nephew. That's it. You see? Was... He didn't fight for himself. Exactly. And he didn't fight to conquer. Yes. And his, when the modern term for his son will be that he was hostage, like uh, Shalit is mm -hmm. the same. Yes. But Abraham had the, had the guts to go and he didn't have an army. I mean, he had some people with him. Yes. And when, it's, yeah, it's very and interesting. He came, he came in the name of the Lord, just like Gideon. And he knew that he you had see? to go for his... Gideon came in the name of the Lord. Yes. And he didn't take a big army with him. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. It's very interesting, you know, when you think about, you know, this program is going to be seen in Great Britain. Mm -hmm. One of the people that taught the Jews how to fight was a British officer by the name of Ord Wingate. Mm -hmm. And he came here carrying a book with him, the yes, Hebrew Scriptures. I heard about you see? him. And he taught the Israelis to fight from that book. And they looked at him, you know, they were, they were secular young Jews, you know, and he said to them, read in the book. And they said, this is not a book about war. And he said to them, this is the book about everything. I know, very true. You can learn everything here. And you can learn tactics. The winner is not the one that has the battalions. I agree. The winner is the I one know. who comes in the spirit of the Lord. I know, and who knows David, this book. David came at Goliath. And Goliath chided him and said, What's the matter with you? What they sent you? A little boy 
with a slingshot, and me, here I am, I'm a, I'm Goliath the giant. Why, I eat little boys like you for breakfast. And then I have to have another piece of bread just to finish my meal. And David said, well, this is one breakfast. You are not going to digest, mister. I'm going to give you a big headache. And that's what happened. Mm. In you this see? country. But, you see, if you don't learn the Hebrew, mm. and if you don't learn, in Hebrew we have texts that are extra-biblical texts. You know that the David mm -hmm. was the great-grandson of a Moabite woman yes, by the name of Ruth. And you know, Ruth had a sister, mm -hmm. and her name was Orpah. And she was married to Ruth's mm -hmm. brother. Ruth married one brother, and Orpah married the other brother. And they both died, and the mother-in-law told them, go back home, because this is the end of the road. I don't have any more children. You will not be able to marry a kin to continue the family. Go back home. So the extra-biblical story tells us that Ruth, you know, said to her those wonderful, famous words, you know, whither thou goest, I shall go, my people, your people shall be my people, and only death will separate me from thee. You see? And... Orpah said, ditto. She said, yeah, me too. But then Orpah saw a gorgeous soldier. He was a real hunk. He was a real good-looking fellow. And he said, come on, baby. Want to ride with me? And so she said, yes. And she went riding with him. He was a Philistine. Mm. And the two of them produced a family of giants, a family of soldiers. And according to the Jewish lore, the extra-biblical stories, the meeting of David and Goliath was actually the two sides of the same coin. You see? And it teaches so many stories. You see? Everybody thinks that the Jews are a race. But if they were a race, Ruth was not part of that race. So David was not part of that race. And therefore, maybe one would think that he's not Jewish. Mm -hmm. And see? like even that Jesus wouldn't have been the Messiah because he was from the line of David. The Which whole point. You see, yeah. the whole thing, exactly. Mm -hmm. But it's not true. You God don't God. have to be born Jewish. Mm -hmm. You see, if you want to be part of the Jewish people, you can be adopted, mm -hmm. you see? And if you have an adopted child, you can love that child as much as you love somebody that actually came out of your womb. Mm -hmm. That we learn through the story of Ruth. Mm -hmm. But we also learn about Orpah, whose dedication mm -hmm. only lasted as long as she wasn't attracted to somebody else. And when she was attracted to somebody else, it was because of false pride. You know, he was, she, was, she loved him because he was handsome and he was strong and he was a giant and, and all those things that so many women are looking at. Looking at. You see, just <laughs> no. like all the men are looking at outer I know. beauty. I know. You know, they all wanted to Be marry, class. you know, the good looking girl, yeah. you know and not the woman of valor. That's it. You Which see? is what the man read to. for yes. every Shabbat. Exactly. This is something again exactly. which is a given. To this, rededicate himself to his wife. This is just for you to know, friends, it's like the passage we read in Proverbs. The, Proverbs 31. The, the woman, woman of valor who can find her worth is far above rubies. That's it. And this is what the man read for every Shabbat. In around Judaism. the table. He sings it to his wife. You see, he woos her. Every Shabbat, a Jewish man woos his wife so that he will show her how much he appreciates her. 
and he will renew their love. I can tell you that I'm married for almost 45 years and I don't have a habit and I certainly don't have hate. Mm. And the woman I married is more exciting to me and I know her worth much more today than I did 45 years ago when I met her. Mm -hmm. I say now very often, it's an art. Marriage is an art. And Absolutely. a lot of people... And it's also something that has to be really renewed every day. Mm -hmm. Every day you have to do something, you see, to continue it. Mm -hmm. And this is something I believe in. Mm -hmm. And I also believe in teaching the lessons of the Hebrew Scriptures to everybody. Mm -hmm. To everybody. It's just amazing. You, you know, it's, I know, we can, you can understand why we'll have eternity because there is always so much to know. And the Bible in Hebrew has a power of we can know more about God. It now, magnifies. Yes. You very, know, it's like a magnifying ex glass. Exactly, exactly. And it thank also you. illustrates. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. It is a thank you again so very much to be you know to be with us and to explain more things and share uh, dear friends sorry i'm starting to speak french i know ah. that you can speak french <laughs> dear friends and i know that you're watching also in france so maybe it's a special bye for you au revoir in france and all the people also in europe we say bye to you and don't forget we are living in the last days You've been watching In The Last Days, a TV program with Martin and Natalie Blackham, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. If you would like to financially support the program or find out about conferences, meetings, or ministry products, then please contact us with the details on your screen. Visit our easy-to-use website at www.inthelastdays.com and register for our free e-newsletter Get the latest news from Israel, product information, online video teaching, or watch today's TV program at a time that's convenient to you. Thank you again, friends and partners, for making this program possible. See you in two weeks, same time, same station, for the next program from In the Last Days.